Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is the um, Transportation Action Committee. Uh, we haven't met for quite a while. In the meantime, we have um, replaced two members. Mr. Andrews is no longer here. Uh, Mr. Foster, the interim town administrator, is here in his stead. And uh, Mr. Frank Heath is the liaison to the Capital Planning Committee who has been chosen to represent Capital Planning. Is that, uh, did I characterize it correctly? Yeah, that is and, correct. Okay. And uh, we have Ellen Begley from the Board of Selectmen and myself, Jeff Sweat from the School Committee and our Superintendent, Barry Rabinovich. And we're here to, to, um, to first hear a report from the Transportation Manager about fiscal year 2012 and then to discuss the implications that, of that report um, for providing services to the children of Wareham for this coming fiscal year, starting really soon, isn't it? Uh, September? Well, no, it started July. No, no, I know when the fiscal year oh, starts, but, but school starts. Oh, um, actually, for the children, they come back the day after Labor Day, which I believe is the 4th. Okay, so August 4th is the first pickup, but I know you're, you're busy in between now and then anyway. September 4th. Did I say October? Thank you. You said August, and I've cut my ears. Thank you. September 4th, parents, don't get it wrong, okay? My apologies. So unless there's any other discussions, um, we'll move on to, uh, to uh, Mr. Tetro's review of the uh, fiscal year 2012 Transportation Department. Uh, I'm just going to echo what I said at the school committee meeting last week. It's the same report. Uh, we, we, did, we had a successful year. Uh, again, this year, we, we made our inspections didn't prove uh, at the level we probably would have expected them, but obviously that comes at a cost, and we'll go into that later on. Um, we've been able to catch up with our preventive maintenance program, um, and just so you understand a little bit, every 4,500 miles or so, uh, vehicles come in and looked at or touched, you know, or actually examined for any flaws fixed any if necessary whatever they actually come in and are looked at every 9,000 miles or every two uh, p.m. cycles uh, fluids are changed in filters so if we got a dry p.m. and a wet p.m. for those people in the uh, listening and, and including myself most people think of oil changes as far more frequent than that is that because of diesel engines or it's because of the uh, the engine style as well as the um, type of oil that we use okay Thank it's you. actually graded a lot, lot more than 9,000, so. Interesting, thank you. Yeah. Um, I've attached to this report for everybody exactly what our PM, uh, our preventive maintenance program looks like. You'll see exactly what's gone over every time the vehicle comes in. Um, so that's, uh, you know, we're, like I said, we're caught up on that and uh, you know, we, we expect to maintain that. We've implemented Easy Bus at a more uh, efficient level. We're able to track more of the costs now um, so that's uh, that's up and running. Our staffing, uh, just to go over it real quick, we have 23 regular ed school bus drivers, 18 special ed school bus drivers, two spare drivers, two 7D drivers. 7D is a, a different license that uh, you're only allowed to drive a van or those yellow plated vehicles, the pupil plates. Uh, 12 bus monitors, two full-time techs, two part-time mechanics, one secretary and one manager. Just for um, clarification, the 12 bus monitors, none of that is discretionary. Is that a fair statement? These are monitors required as a result of the nature of the students being transported? But according to their IEPs, they must have a monitor. We use them as effectively as we possibly can. So if there's uh, three or four students on one bus, they, they only need one monitor. There are situations, however, where we have one monitor, one driver, and one student who, who goes out of district. Uh, so, but we do utilize all 12. Uh, and we util utilize them uh, very effectively uh, to, to minimize how many we actually do need to use. And they're not used on regular morning and afternoon bus runs? That is correct. Thank you. Uh, the transportation budget, uh, you know, it was underfunded by $313,000 in fiscal year 12. Uh, a major cause is the repair of the aging fleet. Um, there were several major repairs and projects that had to get done. Um, to, to ensure that every vehicle on the road is safe for the children. Another significant reason is uh, the service that we're required to give to homeless students. It's an unfunded mandate called McKinney-Vinto. Uh, that program last year cost us roughly $167,000 to the department. 
Of that 167,000, 107 was spent in driver payroll, fuel, or outside vendors. Uh, we serviced 60 homeless students this past year. Uh, that's an increase of 17, 17 students from the previous year. Um, then it goes into uh, what we just discussed with the monitors. So those were two significant increases uh, of, of expenses that we had of why we, uh, why we didn't meet the budget numbers. There's a breakdown on the next chart of what we spent on regular ed, which is 814000 for our in-town special needs, out-of-town special needs, and homeless, we spent $860,000. I attached uh, two sheets of the homeless and our out-of-district students. Uh, no names, obviously, but just to kind of give an example of, uh, of where they originate from, where do they go to school to, um, and, you know, and, and some of the daily costs associated with that to try to break it down. Uh, and I've also attached uh, the sheets from our rental maintenance program, Easy Bus, with a breakdown of each bus and its cost to repair throughout fiscal year 12. And you can see there are several that cost us uh, in excess of $7,000 to repair. I, I, I can't help but react. You've got one homeless child who are transporting 20,000 miles at a cost of $17,500. That's just a big wow. It's one of the requirements that, uh, wow. that we have to do. Any questions from the committee? Um, I have a couple questions so far. I was just wondering um, what projects were you referring to? We've had to do some engine repairs. Because it said major repairs and projects. So I figured, well, engine repairs would be major repairs and projects. So what's and the uh, I'll be happy to answer you because you mm -hmm. did ask the question twice now. Um, one were engine repairs. Well, you asked me, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Begley, and then you said I, I just said repairs. Uh, and, and the second one was we had a tire project that we had to update all of the tires that we use. So it was a significant expense in, in tire repairs. And that's going to go on into this fiscal year as well. I'm not sure why it was um, stated as two separate things, though, because I, I, I would assume that that would be a repair. I thought... We, we could certainly look at it in, in both ways, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, it was just we had to upgrade the tires that we use on the vehicles. Okay. So is it fair to say that a project is something that involves more than one bus or several buses, whereas a major repair might be an individual bus? Uh, the, the tire repair maintenance program involved all of our vehicles. So that was a project. <laughs> uh, whatever you want to classify it as. It really, whatever you want to classify it as is up to, up to you. You decide. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, but that involves nearly every vehicle. And, uh, and we did have uh, some major engine repairs and overhauls that had to be done to, to keep our vehicles on the road. Um, my other question is, are um, all repairs done in-house? No. So uh, what, is there a certain place that we go where it, it could be a cost savings or is it just repaired in different places? We or? typically get three estimates mm -hmm. and we go with the lowest one. And um, when was there an indication that there was a deficit? Because we certainly, not at the end of the year, I mean, it had to be kind of coming down the road. Well, we, we've discussed the budget throughout the year. I, I, the first time we talked about deficit was probably, uh, I honestly, I don't remember specifically, April maybe sometime. So there was an indication last April that there would be a deficit in the transportation budget. We felt it could be made up with uh, our revolving account, but obviously we still fell a little bit short on that. Mm -hmm. That's all I have so far. Can, can yes. I just sure. uh, have a clarification on the tires? Um, did the um, law change or what the state is looking for? Sorry, Kristen. 
Um, did the law change or did the uh, specs change for what we needed for tires? Um, it's an issue with the, with the uh, state registry and, uh, and some of the things that they're looking for. So the, they required us to go with a different? Not, uh, not just us. Okay. Oh, I understand. It affected uh, you know, everybody, but yes, they did. But that was the driving force for changing the tires? That is correct. Okay, and approximately what did that, whether repair or project or whatever, how much did that cost? Uh, roughly $40,000. Okay, thank you. Um, can I just ask one other question? I didn't, I may have missed it. I know that um, you mentioned that it's um, continued to approve with the buses passing inspection. What were the percentage that did not? No, 15% did not fail on their first attempt. 15% did not, did not. Did not pass on their first attempt. Oh, okay, because you, I'm sorry, yeah, you said, said did not fail. You said, yeah. you said it the opposite way. Oh, we had an 85% pass rating. Okay. Uh, and 15% yeah. did fail. Obviously, uh, uh, failures can range, as we've talked about, to a number of things. And before they ever hit the road, they were repaired. Thanks. Just a clarification on the deficit, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we went into FY, I'm losing track here, 12. We went into FY 12 expecting to run a deficit with respect to the operating budget approved by town meeting. Um, we have been covering the deficit with the transportation revolver for several years. So we've known that we were gonna operate a, on a deficit from literally the beginning of the fiscal year. So the, the problem with this fiscal year was not that we weren't gonna run a deficit, but would the transportation revolver be enough to cover it as it has in the past year? So that's what made this year different from prior years. Not the fact that we ran a deficit, but the extent to which the deficit could or could not be covered by the revolver. What else does the um, transportation revolving account cover? Nothing. Right. Well, it, we have in the past, when, when we've had funds, actually purchased a couple of vehicles. But go ahead, Barry. Okay. This last year, um, there were no vehicles bought. Right. The only other um, things that were paid out of that account, <clears throat> so like all revolvers, it's an in and out kind of thing. So if... Um, athletic trip, so the high school um, books the buses to take the kids to a baseball game in Seekonk. Um, we bill the athletic department at the high school for the cost, but then we pay, so that money comes into the revolving account and we pay the driver's salary as well as the gas out of the revolving account. So what's left at the end of the year is the net of, so th there's a cost per hour, and we talked about that once before, that perhaps it should go up, but it was $40 an hour. And into that was built a wear and tear mm -hmm. on the vehicles, which is what the remainder, you know, that 200 and whatever thousand left in the revolver that we then used towards the deficit was from that wear and tear after gas and driver salaries were paid. Um, my question, is the balance of the revolving account, is it rolled over if the following year? It doesn't, re it doesn't it, have to be spent to a zero balance. No, it does not have to be spent so to a zero. So it's rolled over if there's anything left. It's if there's over anything it, left. But so last year, there but, was zero. But and this last year, there's zero. how many vehicles were purchased? One. Wait, is it zero? No, Twelve, no. nothing. Um, I don't when know if that the, other um, vehicle was. In fiscal when last was two buses, two we, vehicles were purchased. The, the two year and before, 11, in FY11? Two and 11, zero and 12. Okay. So two in um, two new buses, two big? No, one new one and one, one used van. Okay. Because I seem to recall a, an article at town meeting about the vans. It, um, correct. There was $60,000 put aside. Nothing has been purchased with that because the money wasn't there. Thank you. We all set? Okay. Go ahead, Jeff. What would you like? I uh, just, um, let's see, we talked about the homeless. We've talked about the, the repair um, out of district. 
uh, for those people who have not had a chance to review the report, uh, is there anything that anybody would like to spend some time on? I'm not saying we want to spend time for the sake of spending time. That's certainly anathema to me, but if anybody has any questions, we've got the expert here. If everybody's good, then, then I'd like to, um, uh, to either shorten or lengthen the meeting, depending on your perspective, by saying the following. Um, from, from my perspective, well, no, let me back off. Um, it, is, it is fair to say that a proposal was made to the, board of, uh, to the school board uh, this past, whenever, 25th of July. Um, could you outline that proposal for this committee, please? Obviously, we cannot continue to run at a deficit. Um, so what can we do to make sure that doesn't happen? I, I think we're going to have to reduce services as well as charge fees in order to make up that uh, $313,000. So my proposal would be to eliminate transportation for high school, grade 9 through 12. There will be exceptions on a waiver basis, which we'd have to work all that stuff out. Um, so that would reduce our, our vehicles from 23 to 13 vehicles. Um, we'd utilize those same 13 drivers, uh, and then we'd switch to a three-tier busing system. So, and, and I'm just picking times. You know, at, at 7.20, we'd bring in the high school kids. At 8.10, we'd bring in Dekas. And then at 9 o'clock, we'd bring in Minot. You said high school, but you meant middle school. Uh, middle school. Yes. So I did that on uh, last Wednesday, too. Sorry. I did. I apologize. Um, so that the same 13 buses, the same 13 drivers would be just continually running on a three-tier system at different, different parts of town. That would save us... Uh, uh, roughly seventy-three thousand uh, dollars, you know, in, in expenses, payroll, fuel, um, and then obviously we have the reduction of kindergarten, so that's another twenty thousand um, dollars. So we we'd still have to charge roughly the thousand students that would be eligible to be charged because we can't charge uh, free and reduced. There's a number of students we can't charge for that. We can't charge students that live, you know, two miles over away from the school. So, reducing all those numbers down, roughly a thousand students, we could uh, effectively charge a fee to. I'd propose about seventy-five bucks and get seventy-five thousand dollars. So that's a savings of one hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars, and the rest I feel we could uh, we could obviously make up with um, with some reduced expenses and reduced costs at that point. So. That's, uh, that's how I see uh, saving that money, is to reduce services. Any questions on that proposal? We kind of, we discussed this at length, um, several meetings, I think, about Plan B, and that was eliminating services. I do have a couple questions, though, because I know that there was a period of time that children that lived um, under two miles from the school were not transported, and then that changed, correct? So there was a time that children were not transported a mile and a half or something? Go ahead. A mile and a half. Ellen, Ellen has changed it. it. It was a mile and a half. Okay. And it went down to a mile. Um, and now it's all years. kids, pretty much, right? Um, Except the ones that live across the street. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's probably a fair statement to say that most elementary students are picked up. Okay. But the school committee policy was changed to um, over a mile that they have to be transported, um, I believe. Okay, but there was a time that we did not, the, the school department did not transport children under a mile and a half from the school. And there was a time, how many late buses? Is there like, is it four days a week that there's late buses? Yes, four days a week. So yeah. there was a time that there was only two days. If, if I can just on the late bus issue. Mm -hmm. Um, the schools are charged for the late buses, so um, the at schools one, are charged? that is correct, at one time in the past, and now I'm talking many years ago, um, that it was provided, but now the um, two, both the high school, middle school, are charged for that service because it's not a back and forth to school, you know, the same $40 an hour that we do for um, other trips. But it's not a cost to the student. It's not a cost to the That's student, That's my correct. point. That's my point. 
I mean, there was a time that late buses were two days a week, and now it's four days a week. Um, I mean, that's an option that it could be two days a week and the other times that the students are charged. I'm talking about a nominal fee. I'm talking like $5. But those kinds of things add up if it's enough students. I mean, if there are late buses that are only carrying two or three children, that's an extraordinary expense, in, in my opinion, um, for two or three students. I'm not saying that those students aren't valued, but I'm saying it, we have to look at everything. Um, so the late buses and transporting children that live less than a, um, a mile and a half, the fees, the tiered system, the reducing the buses, I mean, these are all things that we've talked about in the past, this committee has. Yes, that's true. It's unpleasant, as it is, and uh, believe me, I believe it to be very unpleasant. It's a reality. Any questions on the... Plan B or whatever we want to characterize it as. Uh, let me suggest that I agree with uh, with Jeff that the Plan B is does from a financial perspective accomplish its goal, which is to say it saves enough money so that in combination with the um, revolver we would not be running an operating deficit as a result of doing this. Um, what it doesn't do is fund, of course, new buses. Um, I would like to propose for the committee's consideration something that would, in fact, uh, allow us to continue to offer the services that we now offer um, and would fund the buses, um, and this would be a long-term plan. Um, I'm not suggesting that it wouldn't involve some um, significant uh, workings of, of the budget, which is why I'm glad we have the Finance Committee and the Town Administrator here. Um, but it would basically run like this. For this coming fiscal year, uh, there is we will not be purchasing any buses. It's clear that that's not going to occur unless something happens in October town meeting that, that I don't foresee. Um, and of course, the, uh, uh, it was not approved uh, at April town meeting or by the Board of Selectmen as a, as a debt exclusion. What was approved after town meeting, however, was funding of this unfunded mandate for McKinney-Vento. The exact amount of that funding remains to be seen, but um, all the numbers that I have seen suggest that it would be at least 100,000, if not significantly more than 100,000, meaning I suppose it might be as much as 130 or 40,000, but let's call it 100,000 plus for the sake of argument. That will be coming to the town of Wareham. It will be coming to the general fund, but it seems to me that it's only appropriate that it come to the Transportation Department because they are incurring the expense associated with that. If we were to receive for FY13 that money, um, it is the Transportation Manager's opinion that that would be sufficient to sustain the operating budget, wouldn't replace any vehicles, but it would sustain the operating budget so that we could get through FY13 without running a deficit when combined with the Transportation Revolver. The, continue, the fleet would continue to age, of course, but um, our ability to cope with that for one more year, uh, it's once again the opinion of the transportation manager that that's, that's doable. We clearly see that we've got some buses that are costing close to $8,000 to repair on an annual basis. That can expect to continue for one more year. Having said that, after FY13, there is, in my mind, um, one formula that would eliminate this problem at least over time, which is to say every year after that things would get better and better, and that is the transportation revolver and the operating fund, uh, operating budget, would sustain the operating costs, and McKinney-Vento plus the half the meals tax would sustain the replacement of vehicles. The combination of those two sources for the replacement of vehicles should be well over $300,000 a year. 
as a result of purchasing perhaps used vehicles, whatever economies we could, we could uh, achieve, uh, the transportation manager believes that that's a formula that it would allow us for the foreseeable future to not have to um, go to a three-tiered system and not have to charge parents for um, riding, uh, for their children to ride the bus. I would suggest that given the known consequences and perhaps assuredly some unknown consequences associated with eliminating high school um, transportation, that it's something the committee should seriously consider. But I'll pause now so that people can digest what I said and perhaps ask any questions that I might have created by my proposal. When was it discussed that the mills tax, I know it was discussed at length on town meeting floor, but it wasn't decided that 50% of the mills tax would go to the schools, school department. It was to go to capital funding purchases from what I understand. It, correct. It was, it was for capital funding and half of that was for schools and, and half of that was for the, for the town. That was my understanding about what the town meeting thought they were doing when they passed it. Now. I don't think that's in the language of the article. Um, I'll, I'll defer to others with more knowledge of the specifics. Um, it doesn't mean it can't happen. And obviously, money is fungible, so it can go wherever we want it to go. Um, and that's why I don't know there's any legal basis for saying we are required to get it. Um, but there are some people who certainly think that the spirit of the passage was that's what should happen. Having said that, I don't think that's frankly all that important. What is important is do we want to allocate on an ongoing basis half of the meals tax to the, to the capital needs of the busing, um, bus transportation system? That's really the question because whether it's 100% or 50% or 25%, that's all something that town meeting can decide. But ultimately, town meeting will decide more favorably with a proposal if if the leadership of the town is all behind it. If we can't form consensus, town meeting will probably say they don't know what they're doing and simply say no because it's easier to say no when people haven't convinced you that they're all on the same page. So I'm proposing it now, not because I think the school department is in any way, shape, or form legally entitled to it, and it may or may not be, but that's not the reason I'm proposing it. I'm proposing it because it is a solution to the problem that minimizes the impact on our parents and children. That's the reason I'm proposing it. Yes, sir. I may. Uh, first, I'll make sure I'm closer. One thing I should correct, you asked me if I was a liaison to the capital planning and then therefore to this committee. No, I'm actually, I was appointed as the member from the finance committee to the capital planning and I'm a member of and as such was appointed to this particular committee. Thank you for that distinction. All right. uh, it's a very big distinction. I think in some ways I apologize for answering him incorrectly the first time. Um, I have some questions on what you just uh, mentioned. One of the first things, the mathematics that would come to it is the McKinney-Vento and the half the meals tax. And approximately, I, I think what you're doing is they're looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, uh, that's, good the, that's good with the first year shot, but then every year. Can, uh, can I stop you? I want yes. To you're saying the total of the two is about 200000 No. The meals tax amount is about 400000 If you divide it, it would be 200000 plus agreement. the 100000 yes. so the 300000 you're talking about. Okay. Um, that only covers one year if you're buying the new vehicles. Um, I don't quite see the math that buys you vehicles every year with those dollars. Because the meals tax is every year and McKinney-Vento is every year. Um, yes, but I think the vehicle costs will probably come to more than the three hundred. I would, I would want to go over the numbers, all right? The yeah. other side is, as far as it being half going to the schools, it's my understanding, first off, that the legislation was written so that it has to go to, you know, to capital items, all right? Um, capital items could be both equipment, debt, and all those types of items. Um, I would like to go back to the fact that the school buses are not a, they belong to the town. They're a town issue, all right? Uh, and when the, the budgets are put together, although they appear in the same, uh, grouping uh, under the schools, it's really all about the town. Uh, when the idea was put out to put a debt exclusion in, that's a method of financing and it was supported by capital planning. 
Uh, the reason why it was, was it was a method of financing available to the town, all right, not to the school department. It's not their bus system. Uh, they have some management, you know, they have a management contribution they make to it, but the equipment uh, is the responsibility of the town. Uh, so the way the legislation is written, we can very easily put so much of that meals tax to one set of vehicles and so much to the other set and not violate either the understanding or I think the public consensus either, all right, because the vehicles are going to have to be replaced. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Pardon? Oh, I'm, I'm looking at everybody. <laughs> I have a bad tendency to look to my right. <laughs> my apologies. We won't take that as any indication of your politics. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm not. Here's my concern. Um, I think that There has to be some decrease in services. I do. I believe that to be true. Um, and the, th the thing is that services, the services that we're talking about decreasing are services that were increased without kind of a long-term, how are we going to pay for this type stuff. So the, the services that, um, say, late buses that were decreased, or transporting children that live less than a, a mile and a half, those were increased services by having late buses go from two days to four days or starting to pick up the children that live a mile and a half or less away. So those services were increased some years ago, and now there's a, a proposal to decrease some of them. I'm not saying that absolutely the buses are owned by the town. Every piece of equipment that's in there is owned by the town of Wareham. Nowhere does it say you know, Wareham School Department or School District. It says town of Wareham. So I get that. But I also get that the infrastructure of this town is falling down around our ears. So it has to be equitable. The needs are great in the school department. There's no question that the needs are great. But the needs in the town are great. Right now, I spoke to someone that's in municipal maintenance that is, is right now the only custodian. One custodian is working right now for these three, for the three buildings. For this building, town hall, and across the street. One. And he's, he's kind of beside himself. And that's not an uncommon scenario with some of the things that are going on. I'm kind of looking forward to the sun being over and not having lifeguards, frankly, because I see people go and kind of it drops off over at Onsa Beach, and I see them go down over their heads. So it's not like the town, um, we've all sacrificed. Certainly the school department has sacrificed, the town has sacrificed. But it can't be um, that even perceived that one sacrifice is greater than the other. I just want to see something. And I think that's what the people want. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing from people. And I don't think that the children would suffer if there was a late bus two days a week. And in order to, you'd have to have a minimum number of students and there would have to be a nominal fee to have them for the other two days. Because it's an extra, it is, you're talking about how much it costs to transport one student. Well, that's what we're doing with two or three students on a late bus. We're doing the same thing. Just, just to be clear, as, as Barry said, the late bus is, is not a good example because we actually charge ourselves for that right. service. It comes right out of the LEA budget. So, but there's certainly the, there are other things that could be analogous to, to what Absolutely. you're Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that there's just, there has to be, and I, believe me, I know the economy of this community. I know it quite well because I've had so many people that have approached me. And it was devastating to them. It was a, it, the, the vote last week was devastating for everyone. It wasn't a victory for anyone. It was, it was a lose-lose situation. But I spoke to people who, 50, they, they cannot afford their medication. $50 a month would mean they couldn't take it at all. And now already Just to be much, clear, it wasn't $50 a month. Well, I mean $50 a year. But $50 a year is devastating when someone, say their income is $1,200 a month, and when they get to the end of paying their bills, there's nothing left. 
There are a lot of people that are losing their homes. So it's, they cannot afford it. They just can't. And they, they, were, they were upset about it. Because they were upset not just because of a perception of increased taxes, they were upset that they couldn't afford it for the kids. So there was, there was no celebration with last Tuesday for anyone, last Wednesday. No one. I, I hear you, and I respect what you're saying. Um, so basically what you're saying is that you think the proposal that Jeff made to the school committee on the 25th is something that we should seriously consider implementing. Is that I, I believe that to be true. And if not all of it in one fell swoop, maybe even um, implement some of it and then look at it again. Okay. Mr. Heath. Yeah, if I may, because you know, I want to play the devil's advocate on that too. I think we heard a message last Tuesday loud and clear from many households that said, well, 50 to $100 a year was, was a difficult number. Well, let's swap over to the families that have three or four children or have children in school. They're going through the same financial strain. Um, they are losing their houses just as quick as anyone else, and 50 to $100 um, a year can also be make it or break it for them as well. All right, so to just you know turn and say, well, fine, we're going to charge you know the fifty to hundred, and we're only going to wind up charging it to half the the student population because the other half is on some form of subsidy. All right, strikes me as being most unfair. All right, we're throwing to the burden to people we think can afford it because they happen to have children. I just can't agree with that personally. And I also think the message was very clear from the voters. I don't know how a fee for bus for the schools is any more fair than a fee for seniors to use Gatcher, a fee for any of the other services for any kind of, you know, if we change things from contributions to full meals, if we made uh, every service at the counter of the tax collector a, a fee to actually stand there and have something dealt with, uh, we would, you know, we'd see a lot greater reaction. I don't understand why we would pick on one item and one item only and say that we're now going to charge those. Um, especially when the school experience goes beyond the classroom as well. And that's what we would be talking about putting an additional fee on. Well, why does it have to be fee for service right away? Why can't it be decreased services? Why does it have to be a fee for service? Why can't we see what kind of costs can be realized by decreasing the services? And I'm not saying, that's what I meant by implementing any of these in an incremental way. And certainly not starting out with fees for service, but certainly starting out with um, eliminating some of the services because the buses, tw decreasing by 10 buses, the 10 worst buses could be taken off the road or used infrequently. I think, I think this is, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say, without getting too f high up in the heavens, uh, that this is, this is the kind of discussion that perhaps needs to be had even on a national level, which is you can charge the end user for everything. I could be asked for a credit card every time I call the police. Okay, so all those people who never call the police, you know? But if you call the police, just be prepared to pay. Because, hey, why should I pay for someone who gets in trouble when I don't get in trouble? Um, we've pretty much decided that's not the right way to, to run a community. And there's certainly an analogy to that when it comes to education, that it's the community's responsibility for education and it's the community's responsibility for public security uh, and public safety. So I, I, I do understand when you're an end user when you're not an end user that, and you're running out of money that you'd like to transfer the costs to the end user, which is essentially what, what we're talking about. I, there is no right or wrong answer. Uh, yes, it, depending on your politics, you might have a right or wrong answer, but the, the reality is there's no right or wrong answer. Um, John, could you comment a little bit on what you see in the, on the horizon with respect to the budget, as long as you don't depress us too badly? In other words, if, if, the, if, do you envision, for example, and I'm not asking for a commitment, but when the McKinney-Vento check arrives, is, is, 
and the school department uh, put something on the October town meeting uh, that asked for it to be allocated to the transportation department. Is that something you envisioned would happen? The same, by the same token, when the extra chapter 70 shows up, uh, because there was a little bit more in the chapter 70 than we, uh, uh, than we had for April town meeting, is that something that you would envision going to the schools, just as the increase in general aid um, that came through after April Town Meeting. Do you envision that, uh, do you have a place in mind for where that's going to go? Can, can you give us a hint of what you think from a financial perspective things look like? I would say a lot of that has to do with what we end up with free cash at the end of this year, what funds are available to be utilized. Uh, when you mention when you mention the half of the meals tax, I know that is already budgeted in the 2013 uh, budget, the $400,000 is already part of the estimate. So if you're looking at no. new capital, uh, that's that's already in the budget. No, no, no. I was specifically talking about that for 14 and beyond, not 13. Right. But the way the budget's set up right now, th those numbers are in our estimates to get through the 2013. So if we're going to go out and buy anything new, uh, that's additional uh, debt to pay. So there's, there's a certain dollar amount that's budgeted right now, uh, utilizing those estimates. And we just came up with, we just had a five-year capital uh, project that just went out, uh, was just awarded permanent financing was uh, this July. And next year's payment is $300,000 approximately. Uh, that didn't include any school buses. That was uh, several items that were purchased um, over the last several years. So, um, Without knowing where we stand right now with a free cash situation, I know what we have in stabilization. I know what we have uh, in reserve. Um, and I believe you cut the reserve. The reserve fund was cut this year. Actually, it was increased, but you still have to pay Upper Cape Voke out of it or you know, transfer that money. So there's not a whole lot in reserve. It doesn't look promising, uh, what, obviously. When you say it doesn't look promising, it doesn't look promising for the school department and the transportation department to get those monies? Is it that doesn't look promising for the school department or the town going into this year's, uh, into the fall. But we won't know that until we actually take a look at the year-end numbers. When do you think you'll have a better idea? The accounts office is closing the books right now, um, probably um, by September. Okay. Um, Barry, we've heard from everybody. You want to have some comments? Uh, I believe, you know, we started meeting, um, I don't know how many months ago, and the intent of meeting was to um, kind of analyze the situation, make sure all the facts were there. Um, but what I think the town was expecting, or the, the taxpayers, was to have a plan, um, you know, all the discussion about whether we should privatize or stay in-house and, and so forth. It all comes down to there needs to be a long-term plan um, for doing one or two things, and it's either saying that it's going to cost us, you know, two million four hundred thousand dollars a year to to send it out, or maybe a little bit less than that if we reduce services, or we keep it in house and it's going to cost us more than it currently does and we have to replace vehicles. So, you know, one or the other, we have to come up with a plan and I've heard people suggest things. I've heard reasons why we can't come up with that, but at the end of the day, we still don't have a plan. And so I don't know what the next step is so that we have a plan. I do want to just for information purposes, I say that um, it was suggested that perhaps a hybrid privatization might be an interesting way to go. And by the hybrid, it would mean that we kept all the services with the exception of the morning and afternoon runs and privatized that. As you can see from Jeff's report, we spent about $814,000 on regular ed transportation. And when I saw that number, I specifically asked Jeff, about were there an appropriate level of allocations to that number uh, so that it truly did reflect what it was costing us. Um, he assured me it did. Uh, and then he said that he knows from his own 
colleagues in the in the um, in the transportation business that Born is spending about three hundred dollars a day per bus um, for regular ed transportation. So it was pretty easy to do the math and multiply that three hundred times twenty three um, times the number of days, and that came out to about one point three million. <laughs> what would prevent? Um an RFP going out doesn't cost us anything. Nothing prevents it. But an RFP going out to, for, and see what, what that would cost. I mean, I think that we did meet weeks, months ago, and um, we talked about this plan. This, what we're discussing now and the, the proposal to, in order to, to live within our means is reducing services. And we, talk, we talked about plan B, because before town meeting, then we've not met since since town meeting, I believe. We these are all things that we discussed. Are they absolutely not any of our first choices? No. But are they a necessary choice? Maybe. The only reason I brought that up is to say that um, even the hybrid model doesn't save us any money. But we, if we sent out an RFP, we can we can find that out for certain. Well, we're pretty certain now. But m my point is. We can easily send out an RFP to do that. In fact, I'd be more than happy if John wanted to send out an RFP on the part, part of the town. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, ultimately, the responsibility for approval of it would be the school committees, but we would be thrilled to approve something that would save the town money. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing would please me more than to get this off our table so we could focus on the education of kids. Uh, I don't think, based on the information that I was given, that we should look at that as a silver bullet. That's really the reason I brought it up, because um, it doesn't look like it's going to save us any money. In fact, it would cost us some money. Should, could we? Should we do it? Fine. It doesn't matter to me. Um, and the reason I say it doesn't matter to me because I don't think it's going to solve our problem. I think we need to focus on things that actually have a chance to solve our problem. I agree that cutting services is a way to solve the problem. I do agree with that. But I don't think that solving the problem is finding money here, finding money here, finding money here either. That's not a long-term solution. On a, and this is on every fiscal year. Let's find some money here. Let's find some money here. You know, this piecemeal of funding what we have is not a long-term solution either. I wasn't proposing piecemeal. I had a very specific long-term solution. I don't consider it piecemeal to say that when the state recognizes an unfunded mandate and they've decided to reimburse it to the, to the district, to the towns, um, that for us to ask for that money because we're the one incurring the cost, I don't consider that a piecemeal solution. I consider that to be an obvious um, way of getting money to the system, especially since it's new money, not money that, that's part of John's budget. But secondly, I, secondly, when the meals tax was approved, which was also new money, there was lots of discussion about the fact that it should fund uh, half of that money. In fact, I was a party to a a conversation with the prior town administrator where he acknowledged that was the right way to go. I'm not saying it's binding. I'm just saying there's more to it than simply it's a good idea. And that's a, not a piecemeal solution. That's an ongoing allocation of, of annual funds to solve a problem. And then what we're saying, if those two pieces came in, the revolver and the operating budget, as long as it didn't continue to be cut, would support the operating budget and we'd have a viable solution. But if that's not something that uh, enough, we can't get consensus around that idea, uh, then I think you're right. The only way, place we go is cutting services. Now, we have a public hearing uh, scheduled for tomorrow evening on this very subject. So we can hear from citizens about whether this, this is um, a good idea. I can tell you that the school committee, when it met on July 25th, found it such a terrible idea, I couldn't even get a motion on the table to, to, to give direction to the superintendent and the, and the transportation manager so that they could go forth. And yet we're only a little over a month away from having to provide services. So it is a very, very difficult and even emotional uh, decision uh, for people who are, have the responsibility to make it. I'm not suggesting that you don't have that responsibility too. We're all part of the decision-making process. But my point is this. We have to have a balanced budget, obviously. Yes. Now, in order to have a balanced budget, we don't have a funded 
Council on Aging Director position here. We don't have lifeguards. We have fewer and fewer people in municipal maintenance. We are cutting services like crazy in order to have a pretty much a level funded budget on the town side. So we're already, without having public hearings, just saying, you know, the, the mandate is, we didn't fund the lifeguards, we don't have them. Not a public hearing on whether or not we should have them and what people felt about it. So we, the town side is already cutting. But we're cutting deeply. I understand, but it's not often that the school committee is asked to make a decision that you know is going to negatively impact, literally, in some form or another, every parent and child in our system. But the, some of the decisions, Jeff, just to make the point, the decisions that were made on the town side of the budget may negatively impact 40,000 people in the summer. That's my point. I just, do, I just want to keep it real because I'm not saying that cutting is a great thing to do. I, I am not. not saying that. I know you're not. But I'm saying that sometimes it may be necessary. So if, and I understand how you're, you're looking for annual um, allocations that would, would fund the budget. I absolutely get that. But the town side needs some annual allocations as well that's going to maintain the, the level of services that we now have. Never mind, somehow they pulled a rabbit out of the hat and the town hall remains open five days a week. I don't know if that's going to happen going forward. I don't know what's going to happen with some services in, in the next year, maybe the next two years. For example, Council on Aging or the libraries. So there are some real issues here that are town-wide and um, it, it's going to impact the entire town. Mr. Heath. Yeah, I, I hear Mrs. Bagley, and as we said before, the school busing is, belongs to the town. It's a town issue. They've obviously taken a position that says people will have to live within their budgets. So the budget is one point, I'm sorry, one point, almost $1.4 million. And if we're cutting services and every other service that they have, then I guess the message is pretty clear. The school bus service has to be cut as well because it's their game. Not, I understand your, what you're saying on your side, all right, but from actual responsibility and dollars out the window, it's their responsibility. The message to me is very clear, cut services. I don't candidate. agree with it, but that's the message. I understand. Be clear, I'm a member of this committee, so that's my message. I am not speaking for the entire Board of Selectmen. It, this has not been discussed in open session, has not been on the agenda, so I don't know how my colleagues feel. So this is not the decision that's come from the Board of Selectmen. This is the decision that's come from the member, Ellen Begley, of the Transportation Action Committee. That I would, I would suggest that the Board of Selectmen should bring this up on their agenda as soon as possible, right? Because it is their decision. It, it is certainly their decision from a financial perspective, and I, and I agree with that. Um, but in every other respect, it's, it's the responsibility of the school department. And in all candor, I'm not sure I can get the school committee to vote to support the plan that would cut services. Now, what is the impact of not getting them to do that? The impact is a uh, town meeting problem in October. Now, it's, it's to me particularly problematic um, if we cannot rely on the McKinney-Vento money coming to the town, transportation department, when it is new money, not known that it was, it was even available to the town in April, and in fact, we, our responsibilities related to that have grown from 40 some odd children to 60 children approximately just in the space of a year. Am I, have I had those numbers correct? It went from uh, 43 last year to 60. 43 and obviously we have no idea what's gonna happen exactly. uh, in September. So to, I would have a great deal of difficulty explaining to a parent tomorrow night, frankly, why if we're pre prepared to live within our means um, based on what was approved by town meeting in April, but that the state, after the town meeting, came to us and said to every town that is feeling this burden and said, it's an unfunded mandate. We'd like to provide some money to you. It's worth about a hundred and some odd thousand dollars to Wareham and the town, and we're going to ask for the town to approve that in October, and we can't get the support of this committee or the Board of Selectmen or the Finance Committee or any other committee outside of the school committee. I don't know how I tell a parent 
that that's the right thing to do. How, how would you? It's brand new money, you know? It's, it's money that would sustain us for another fiscal year. Admittedly, the buses would continue to wear, but at least it would get us through another fiscal year without having to tell high school kids and a bunch of other kids that their schools are opening at a different time, that all of the things that they thought would be available to them. Let's not forget that a lot of parents are working two jobs, and I've had kids tell me literally, no bus, I don't get to school. It is literally that simple. So I, I'm, I'm really not asking this committee to get behind my proposal about McKinney-Vinto and half the meals tax for FY14. What I am asking this committee to do is the right thing about the, coming, uh, about the McKinney-Vinto money for FY13. I think we've earned it. I think we're entitled to it. I think it's brand new money, and I can't see how the town should be spending that money when we have a desperate need for it for, this, for the children of Wareham. I just don't get it. Is there a consensus that the school transportation department should get the McKinney-Vinto money for FY13? Would you make that motion, please? So moved. <laughs> Can I have a second? I'll second for discussion. Thank you. Is there any discussion? <laughs> what I would say is the Capital Planning Committee, uh, during the course of the budget process, voted a recommendation to the town administrator that the school budget, including the purchase of buses, all right, uh, the school bus budget should be $1.6 million. And that would have to be the position of the Capital Planning. They made that recommendation. And the decision was made in the budget process to cut it by three, by approximately $250,000. Just to be clear, none of this McKinney-Vento money would be used, to my knowledge, or for it would be exclusively for the operating budget. Maybe there'd be a used van, or it, with the approval of of town meeting and the, well, with the approval of the town administrator, because we actually have 60,000 encumbered. Uh, but basically, it would be used to fund the operating budget. So I have a motion and a second, and we're open for discussion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Did you want to say something, John? Yes, I haven't even looked at this as far as uh, I didn't know this option was coming up, and you're asking to decide how you're going to spend future money at this meeting right now. Um, yep. And the reason is because we're about five weeks away from having to provide the service, and we're not asking for any more or less than the amount that the state is going to send us that is not part of the FY13 budget. It's brand new money. I'm just asking for what the state says is reimbursement for our expenses. That's all. And it seems to me that if I was doing almost anything else, you could say, oh, wait a minute, but this is found money. <laughs> and it's earmarked, according to the state, for the very thing we're going to use it for. So. I don't really think it's fair since we're five weeks away from, unfair, because since we're five weeks away from providing the service. But you're not bringing in any of the uh, meals tax? None, that none of the meals tax, not on the table. Any further discussion? I'm very uncomfortable with um, committing the Board of Selectmen for anything like this. And um, with just hearing about this you're not, today. You're committing yourself. Well. Um, I won't commit. The, I won't commit until I have more information about it. What What information do you need? I'll research it. McKinney Vento. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot of information about that available. Okay. But which Which means you can vote no. That's okay. I understand. I respect that. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. I'll call a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed. All those abstaining? Thank you. We have three, one, one. I've heard everybody. If anybody else has anything else they'd like to bring before this committee, um, I'd be happy to talk about it. Um, and Ellen, if you do you want to report back on your research about McKinney-Vento at the next time we meet? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. Maybe we'll even have a number by then. Does anybody, would anybody like to propose a date that we get gather again? Oh, yeah. 5.30 is, seems to be a pretty good time. 
As long as it's not a selectman's meeting, that makes it for a very, very, very long night. Yes, that's true. Very. And that would be true for a school committee meeting too. Very. So I guess we could probably try for Mondays or Thursdays. Uh, we've got school committee next week. Yes, we do. Well, we're still every other week in August. Then oh, we okay. Go, then we go to, um, we're not meeting, I believe, the 4th because the day after Labor Day. And then we'll start going weekly. Is that right? John, do you have any idea when no, the... No, I'm talking about September already, Alan. Any idea when the McKinney-Vento number would be available? I've been trying to get it out of Susan Gifford, and she has been able to figure it out either. The, the, it was contained within the budget. Only the total. The state budget. But there was a spreadsheet that was available through uh, the business manager's office that did give numbers. Now, whether they're estimated, I, I, you know. Yeah, I know. So we'll work on it. Well, you're going to be researching. Do you want to uh, meet before the start of the school year? We can. We'll have, you know, after tomorrow you night, we'll have a feel for what the school board is. So how about... Um, Let's put it this way. On the 8th, it's my opinion that we will not be able to in any way delay giving, any further delay giving guidance to the transportation manager and the superintendent with respect to the services to be provided in August. So we've got some urgency with respect to that. Um, if you think ba based on your research, um, you, you might reconsider your negative vote because that's important to me because consensus has always been what I've been trying to achieve. Uh, and if John would feel more comfortable, um, b is it possible to meet before the 8th and hopefully have a better idea of how much this You're talking is worth? about before the 8th of September? No, I was... No, of before I, the 8th of August? I know, that may be grossly unrealistic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the Board of Selectmen meets on the 7th, um, and then we already have a meeting on Monday, Yes, Jeff. we do. <laughs> I mean, we could certainly meet... Brief. On the 8th, we have a meeting. Yes, we do. We could meet... How about if we met briefly prior, prior briefly to on the, the search committee? Or briefly on the 8th. I'll take the long night. Uh, or excuse me, we'll take the long night. Um, um, there's a ZBA hearing at 6.30. You meet at 6.30 though, right? Uh, no, hearing? 7. 7 years old. Yeah. There's also a FinCon meeting on the 8th. Oh, uh, there you go. So that's a long meeting for you guys. What about um, meeting even earlier, like at 4.30 on that Monday? What do you think? On the um, 6th? Um, that's the Monday? Just before our own meeting, that that works for me. Because that way you wouldn't have to like make a special trip or wait for us. Or same with John. What do you think, John? Four thirty on a Monday. So that would be the sixth of August, correct? That would be fine. Either. Just, 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 and I'm putting this on the table without having discussed it with anybody. It's just me talking off the top of my head. Let's let's say um, the government is the state government is kind to us, and McKinney Vento turns out to be worth. I don't know, 100, 160. Remember, it's a lot larger than when they did their initial estimates. We're going to base it on whatever we turned in. Barry, can you talk to your microphone? In any event, um, <laughs> e e e even if we got 80,000 and the town kept the remaining portion of McKinney Vinto, that would be an important step to balancing the budget. I understand. Okay, so. We're just trying to get consensus so that everybody can get on board I with an idea. I do not want to commit to anything that I don't know a whole no, lot no, about. No, no, no. This is for next meeting, not tonight. Yes. But those, exactly. I mean, I'd like to know much more about that. And um, it's kind of, I, I'm very uncomfortable in committing to money that we don't see. Agreed. But I still believe that if all five of us went back to our respective organizations and said, we got behind something, it would say mountains to both the I town. I that last year. Yes. And the year before that. And we haven't done it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we haven't done I it. I know. Okay. I, feeling like we've accomplished, oh, we picked a time, yes, 4.30? 4.30, Monday On the 31st? No, 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 the 6th. The sixth. No, 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 the sixth. On the 6th, thank you. That's today, yes, thank you. That's uh, today. 4.30 on the 6th. So sixth. it's less than a week. Yes. Yes. Could you also bring your numbers where you were talking for 14 as a p 
potential long-term solution. Could you bring your numbers on that so we could at least take them with us and study them? Happy to do so. Or that send them to us. Or send them to us. As soon as we've got them, you'll have them. All right, that would be great. Okay. You and I can work on that. You know what we're talking about? In other words, what would an FI 14 budget look like if we got the numbers that we're talking about? Well, FY 14, if you don't, always well, be prepared. Yeah. Yes. I'm just saying. No, no, no. I understand that. I mean, but it wouldn't be balanced. That's the, that's the I mean, issue. I don't, you know, I, I don't determine my household budget on a, a, well, maybe I'll have this bonus. I do think, I do think there are problems in, in equating municipal, state, or federal governments with household budgets. I think it's an easy analogy to make, but it breaks down when you examine it thoroughly. Money is money when it what, comes, you know, money. I'm sorry. Where are we meeting <laughs> next Monday? It's always easier for Christian if we meet here. So because, well, we're, um, we have another meeting that, here at right. 530. Exactly. Right. Sure. And I'm sure whatever we're going to accomplish, we can do it in an hour. Okay. Thank well, you, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. If you, you Jeff. don't mind, motion to adjourn. Yes. So I, moved. Second. Second. I, I heard a motion and I heard a second. We are adjourned. Thank you.